I think it's really important for folks to acknowledge and know that not only does SRLP support folks in the free world, but we also have a large membership who are currently detained um, in, as a part of some involuntary custody, and we provide the same extension of services to those folks as well as um, our, our folks in the free world. We have members on the inside. I came from basically being in a jail cell to learning about SRP, learning about its mission, um, learning who Sylvia Rivera uh, as a person actually was, um, knowing the history of Marsha P. Johnson, and I was instantly hooked into this movement. I think thinking about the state-sanctioned violence that is on our state right now, specifically with black trans women, um, is um, really represented in the prison industrial complex. The work of the PAC really inspires me to continue to understand that um, the people that are incarcerated, the folks that represent our communities are folks like me, like myself, and so um, it's really impactful every week to read hundreds um, to thousands of letters that we get to folks telling us the conditions of confinement that they're facing and the ways that we work, um, formerly incarcerated folks work and currently incarcerated work to remove those barriers and build their pro political participation. Knowing that the work that I do since leaving um, SRLP as an intern, I've had the privilege of now going into the prisons and the one work or one motivation that I see that is so needed is them seeing someone who was in the same place as they were. They know who we are. They know her. They knew me. That is the most powerful thing. However, also knowing that the education be, can be given while they're in their cubicle, while they're in their cell, Unfortunately, even if they're in solitary confinement, we can be teaching and guiding in the spaces where they are. We all have a voice, and we live in a time today, in this time, that that voice is finally being heard. We haven't reached that milestone yet, you know, like we're all screaming together, and now they're listening. And whenever I do find a transgender person or TGSI person, and I asked them, do you know Civil Rebel Law Project? They says, no, I, I, I don't know what, what that is. Um, I said, here's the address. This is the Civil Rebel Law Project. Have you ever got a name change? Have you ever um, had any problems with housing with an attorney or with anybody? Did they misgender you, anything like that? This is the place where you should knock or ring their doorbell, and they will let you up, and they will help, and they will help you. If we had all the resources, um, there wouldn't be a need for jails. There wouldn't be a need, there wouldn't be the criminalization that is placed on us that like perpetuate the violence that we face and lead to incarceration for many people of color, including trans people, including trans women of color specifically. So I think if we had all the resources in the world, there would be no need for prisons and we could really envision abolition and trans liberation. I come from an era, an era of stone wall. And come from out of hiding, disclosing ourselves, eliminating ourselves, and coming back to a time that it need to be an awakening. And I always say, in most of the speeches I say, can you hear the cry? The cry of a TGNC, gender non-conforming, non-binary, intersex, questioning, queer people are still crying. When they're uneducated, and then we need to educate them, what's knowing your opportunities, your goals, and your dreams that you had buried inside of you, because nobody would listen and let them know we're here to listen. That gives me the drive.